it's Sabrina. So a lot of you requested for me to talk about how I'm studying for the MCAT and what I've been doing to prepare for my test. So I plan on taking my test in the winter or in the spring. I really want to take it in the winter and then again in the spring um, if I have to, but I want to take it ahead of time because I'm actually applying this year. Um, I'm going to be applying in the summer of next year, I guess. So usually when it comes to taking the MCAT, a lot of people take it their junior summer year and then they also apply to medical school. Um, the only reason I don't want to do that is because it's very last minute. Um, if you take your test and then you don't do very well on it, like you don't have a chance to retake it because you also have to apply at the same time. So I definitely want to take it ahead of time so I can have that out of the way and I want to make sure that I have the score that I want and that I have I will just be mostly focusing on doing the application and already have that out of the way. So that's why I am studying right now. As most of you guys know, if you guys are pre-med, they have changed the MCAT. So um, now we have the new MCAT which started this year. I don't know if you guys have taken it or not, but there is a lot more on it. Um, there is a lot more questions on it. It's longer. It's seven hours instead of four. And um, there's also just like different sections on it that weren't there before because as you guys know, med school is moving towards a more like psychological um, I guess attitude, it's trying to understand people more than just, you know, treating patient to patient like we're robots. We're going to actually try to like understand our patients, connect with them, and see how they think psychologically. So the MCAT is changing to better fit how our, um, I guess, I, how us as doctors are, um, who we're expected to be with our patients. So it's really cool, but it kind of sucks because, <laughs> of course, when I want to become a doctor, all of a sudden everything has to change. So, um... I guess, yeah, there's, it's going to be a lot harder, it's going to be a lot longer, and I'm not really looking forward to it, I don't think, I don't know how I'm going to survive 7 hours of a test, it's going to be intense. Um, it's also all online, which is kind of cool, but I don't know how I feel about it either, because I feel like I really like to work problems out, and just to have it right in front of me, and to work like that, I feel like online is going to be really interesting, so that's something I have to get used to. Um, I guess I didn't realize that. I thought that some portions would be online, but then like the physics and other stuff would be like in pencil. But no, it's all online, so it's really interesting. Um, also, as I've been reading and learning more about what's on the test, um, I found out that there's different type of, types of questions on the test, and I didn't know that either. There's not only just like multiple choice, there's also like context clue questions where you're going to be given a picture and you have to use it to answer a question. And there's also like um, he has questions that make you use your brain, um, questions that will have to do with the topic that they're talking about, but you also have to know information for it to answer it. So it's interesting how much there is to it. I guess I didn't know. So I'm really happy I've started studying now and I'm starting to prepare now. So I'm going to show you guys what I'm using to study for the MCAT. I bought this. It's really heavy. It's really hard to pick up. Okay. I bought this MCAT subject review complete set. It was um, $60, I believe, $70, and it was from Amazon, and it's the Princeton Review. I used the Princeton Review to study for the AP test also, and I really, really liked it, and I definitely recommend it. It helped me get high scores on my AP test, so that's why I went with the Princeton Review for the MCAT. Hopefully, it'll help me. Okay, so inside of this, there's a million books. <laughs> there's a book on each subject. Um, there's a book for psychology and sociology, and I actually just finished this, um, and I'll tell you how I finished it already and stuff like that. So I just finished reviewing this. There's a book on general chemistry. This is one of the fattest books in here. It's a book on biology and biochemistry. It's scaring me. It's so big. <sighs> My favorite class ever, physics. There's an entire huge Mungus book on physics. I'm not good at physics, so I'm really gonna study this like crazy. I'm really good at math, so that'll be fun, but the physics part is just not my thing. I can't get physics. Organic chemistry is really small, which is sad because I love organic chemistry, so I guess there's not that much on the exam. And also, critical analysis and reasoning skills. This is, for some people, one of the hardest portions on the MCAT. It's like verbal reasoning, and you just have to be just really have to know your stuff for this. Okay, so there's a lot of books. So <laughs> that's why I've started studying so early, just to make sure that I have enough time to study and that I can get through all this information and material. So as I was saying, I just finished the psychology and sociology 
review MCAT book and I started it on either Friday or Saturday. Um, I started it a few days ago so it hasn't been a week yet but I um, it's a really small book so um, there is in this book there is 290 pages of review so what I did was I took a chapter and I read it every single day and dividing it up like that just makes it I guess more relaxing because there's not that much to read in a chapter I think there's like 30 to 40 pages per chapter so taking the time out of the day to do that because I know that we all have like really busy schedules um, taking the time to do that is really good I would spend at least two hours reading it and also there's a at the end of each section, there's a like a little test. You can take a mini test of what it's going to be like on the um, actual exam. And it just has uh, multiple choice questions, and then it has a passage, and you answer questions based off of the passage. So every single day, I have been doing that. And it's been, I don't know, it's been really helping me. Uh, it doesn't feel as stressful because it's divided up, like I said. I don't have to do so much. And I'm still studying and still learning stuff every single day. And it is a lot easier because it, it is sociology and psychology, and I feel like that's more, I guess, I don't know how to describe it. For me, it's like more self-explanatory, like it's something you know, we all know, but there is like different terms and definitions that we don't know. And what I plan on doing is I plan on doing that with every single one of these books. I plan on doing it chapter by chapter every single day, and hopefully I finish it by the winter. I think I will. I mean, there's six months until then. So the next one I'm doing is general chemistry. And I'm starting with the stuff that I've already learned and that I'm not like, that I haven't, I guess I've learned already and I know. Um, so the only thing that I don't know in here is biochemistry, which is, well, I'm a biochemistry major. So I'm starting my biochem actually this semester and next semester. And um, I'm not going to be reading that till I guess I am more into the semester and I understand more stuff. Then I'll go into that. But other than that, I've done organic chemistry, I've done physics, done math, and I don't know what critical analysis and reasoning is right now. I just know it's really hard, so we'll see what that's like. But um, so far I'm feeling pretty good because I know most of these subjects and feeling pretty good about it. Um, especially after reading psychology and sociology, it wasn't that bad. And then after I read all these, I'm going to be taking, there's three full length practice tests online. I'm going to be taking those and taking them very seriously. I'm going to actually just make myself pretend like I'm taking the MCAT. That'll be a lot of good practice. Um, so that's how I'm studying for that. Also, uh, I've been thinking about this, but I feel like I should be writing down stuff that I don't understand or don't remember, especially when I take my um, quiz at the end of each chapter and I notice the stuff that I'm missing. I should probably be writing that stuff down. So I think I'm going to go back and do that. It's a really good idea to write down stuff that you don't remember, you don't know, and just like definitions so you can go back to it way easier than just like flipping through the entire book. So I'm going to be doing that. Sorry my nose is so stuffy. I've been having intense allergies lately. It's really hard to talk right now. But um, that's what I've been doing. And then I've just been taking the tests in this little, I have like a um, three subject college world notebook and this is where I've been taking my MCAT practice test. So I can just look back on it too and see what I missed. Also, I know schools offer like practice tests or different sites around schools offer practice tests. So I will try to like, um, get involved in that, learn more about that, and try to go take a practice test with other students around me, so what it would be like on the actual day. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much what I've been doing for the MCAT so far. I haven't been going like crazy or cracking down on it. Um, I know a lot of people who study last minute or study like three months before their test have like a different intense or schedule where they have to study like five to six hours per day. But if I thought I'd get a head start and not have to like go as crazy with the studying. And hopefully I remember what I'm studying because I know it's going to be so far away. So that's why I'm trying to study the subjects I know best first. And leaving the ones that are difficult for me, like physics, last. Okay. If you guys have any other tips on what you studied for the MCAT, if you've taken MCAT, like this year's MCAT, like the 2015 new one, and you know what it's like, let me know. Let me know like what you felt, how you felt, um, what you studied. I would love to know what you studied. Anything will help um, just knowing, even if you're in med school right now, It'd be cool to hear, you know, your experience with the MCAT and how you felt about it because I know it's like the most dreadful thing in the world for us medical students because our life literally depends on it. Like you need to have a really good MCAT score to get in or you have to have a good GPA to get in and it's pretty complicated to get in. So um, let me know if you have any advice for me. I'd love to hear some. But I hope you guys found this video helpful and good luck to all those pre-meds out there. 
Um, it can be really stressful sometimes and I know it can get to us, but you know what, if this is what we want to do and we know this is what we want to do, then we can do it. So don't give up. Um, if you ever feel like you're giving up, just watch my videos and just watch this video and just keep going and be inspired to keep going because we're going to help save lives one day, guys. Alright, thanks so much for watching. See you guys soon. Bye guys.